Hello my soccer universe to the final video, although I'm not sure if it will be the final that posts, but review of what happened in the Premier League where I saw half a game and I saw quite some highlights, so I feel, and I listened to a podcast, so I feel I'm quite uh, prepared for this one. Uh, again, like for the Serie A review, I'm not pulling up Crystal Palace and Arsenal at the moment because they are playing and so it's only 12 team and I'm doubling up with West Ham. Uh, since I was about to put on Liverpool and a wager uh, jersey, but then I said, yeah, I'll be talking probably a lot about United and then putting on a Liverpool shirt doesn't feel quite right to be honest. Um, and yeah, the times are changing in the Premier League and maybe some change is needed at some places, definitely. Um, I would say we'll hop in and we'll tackle the topics one, one 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 by one i mean there, there, there's a big topic but i want to leave it for the end uh the first game was claudio ranieri is back and he gets thumped unceremoniously thumped by liverpool who will just continue a really really good run money firmino firmino salah with an under wonder goal this guy is in the form of his life at the moment. Uh, I think you cannot say it any dif different. This guy is in really, really, really good form. Uh, and then uh, very late on Firmino adds another one. Thoroughly deserving in every regard. Um, I really liked how Klopp and Ranieri greeted each other before the game, maybe a little bit even after, but you know, if you get thumped 5-0, I'm not sure how much you want to see, uh, talk, talk, talk to him. Uh, didn't see any highlights, but Aston Villa uh, had a 2 0 lead against Wolves, who turned it around and win 3-2. That's why Wolves is quite up there, big win for them. Uh, and not too far away from um, that ground, we also had uh, Leicester play against Manchester United. A game to be fair. They probably could have gone either way. Mason Green with a great opener, Yuri Tielemans, uh, give them an e equalizer and then the game kind of, you know, seemed to be going a little bit nowhere. Um, and then uh, uh, Soyuncu puts Leicester in the lead. Rashford a few minutes later equalizes and a minute later Vardy puts the dagger into United and makes it 3-2 and then Patson Daka, who just came from Salzburg, makes it 4-2. Uh, so the end was really, really exciting and as I said, the feeling was that it could have gone either way. However, I think the big problem was that the United defense, especially uh, Maguire, didn't look all that uh, well um adjusted yet let's put that that, that that way and that united more and more seem like a collection of superstars and not like a team very much the psg route although i would argue the psg still has a slightly better um, squad although no i mean the united squad is really 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 good now uh which of course begs the question at the end in addition United is the only team that has not played any one of the big teams yet. Well, the schedule is not coming hard and fast to them. I mean, they play Liverpool next uh, round. I think there's a Manchester derby in there. Uh, so, and then two games against At Atalanta amongst others. Although those may well be the easiest one come, come, come up. And that tells a whole lot because Atalanta can be a pest to anyone. So, yeah, um, I am... You know, I know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is probably a good man, man, manager, but as I said, now United have a team that would need some guidance where with a little bit tactical adjustments, uh, you could actually elevate the squad. And I, I, I think I heard a stat like of the nominal top six teams, fourteen po the other teams have only earned 14 points of 10 of which are United. So to me, uh, United are definitely not a top four team at this moment, which given their squad is ac actually a pretty big statement to be made. Um, the one thing that I hear, you know, I don't think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to get fired anytime soon. I think the only time that he might get under pressure if he either gets eliminated early from the Champions League or if fourth place is in danger because he's very convenient for the owners he doesn't ruffle the feathers like previous coaches did at least that's uh how i uh hear and feel about it um i would think that you know if you could, would get a conte this could elevate you but i think a uh, conte will 
cause similar troubles as previous coaches. I actually think United would do well to get a little bit less heralded coach with some tactical ac acumen. The trouble there, of course, is um, like um, the, the guy from Brantford or even uh, from Brighton. The problem there is they don't have big star uh, exposure. I also don't think that Zidane is well suited. So for me, I think uh, that's the other side of the coin is that there is not really an obvious candidate at this time to take over United. So yeah, so I think they will continue like that kind of dithering. Top four is probably rel relatively safe given the um, competition because you still have other players. But you know, if Ronaldo is playing as anonymous as he did uh, this uh, weekend, Maybe he will get unhappy and that might cause a change. But I honestly, I don't see much change coming uh, at this moment, but I think it would be ripe for a change. But, you know, it needs to be smart. And as far as I think, the Glazers are only interested in having someone to not make too much trouble and, you know, have the fans sort of happy with having big stars. Uh, the other Manchester team had no problem with, uh, over, uh, with dispatching. Burnley 2 0 seems actually like a low scoreline. Uh, Bernardo Silva was uh, the outstanding man there. So, not too much more that I can say there. I mean, uh, Burnley had missed a few chances that that, that, that could have turned, turned around. Uh, Brentford against Chelsea. I mean, Chilwell with a great goal to give Chelsea the lead. And it looked like very, very easy for Chelsea. But in the last 20 minutes, Brentford came. And if it wasn't uh, for Mendy, Chelsea might have well dropped points or lost that, that game. But with the, such a rock at the back, Chelsea will always have a chance of doing so, something. And, you know, they did it. They got rid of Lampard, who seemed out of his depth. And they got a proper coach in. And yes, Tuchel may have messed up here and there but the record speaks for itself and i think chelsea we we will although they don't look quite right yet but i think there is a chance that this squad can go play places maybe even challenge for a for a title it seems it really seems to me i i still think it is city and then liverpool and chelsea are a little bit below but rather level uh as i said you uh, west ham united get a win at everton and then we have to talk about the uh, uh, new big kids on the block Newcastle's takeover, ownership takeover. Yes, Newcastle fans are happy that Mike Ashley is gone because he didn't do anything for the club. And now we have the super rich uh, Saudi Arabian uh, funded new ownership group that is supposedly the richest one in the world. I honestly, um, I, I was asked or kind of uh, nudge to make a video. I honestly know too little, but all I can say is I'm again a little bit appalled by the prep by the premier league to again pander to foreign ownership especially the premier league um you know and the only reason the deal broke because bean is a partner with the prep that the, the premier league which is qatari owned now uh the saudi arabia got rid of the pirate um tv company that kind of took uh b out or q out or whatever uh, and so that, that those kind of uh, things got resolved and suddenly you can take over and no one's talking about all the uh, other troubles surrounding that fund. It is sports washing in its finest. And I can totally understand why Newcastle fans are very, very happy and very excited. I mean, uh, if you've been supporting a club and now you have an ownership that is very rich and seemingly wants to put money into the team of course you're gonna be happy um i have to say i mean i'm also a little bit little bit although i lost my love for chelsea and psg in the 2000s and 2010s then you know if they're doing well yes i used to support this team so of course there's some sympathies left um yeah if someone would take over Lusk and put a lot of money in it, I mean, if they want to do it in Aus Austria, first would ask myself, are they really for real? Because most of the time they're not. Well, of course I would be happy uh, in some ways, unless they completely take out the identity like they did with Sal Sal Salzburg. And even there, there are many fans that kind of said, oh, oh well, I'd rather win 10 uh, championships in, in a row playing in red and white instead of uh, keeping the purple 
and being close to bankruptcy. So yeah, uh, the stadium was kind of this happy moment. We got rid of the sponsor. We are now the richest team. Uh, it took a good turn at the beginning with Wilson giving um, Newcastle even the lead, but then Spurs completely took over. Especially Dombele, who got the equalizer. Uh, Kane, although it seemed offside, at, at first gets the lead. Then there was a huge break because someone in the stands needed to be reanimated. So uh, kind of scary, scary scene. So the game uh, was a little bit delayed and I actually saw uh, that. Uh, but before that, when it was retaken, uh, uh, Young min Son gives Spurs a 3-1 a three lead. It was really all Spurs. I mean, Shelby uh, gets himself set off and very late on Eric Dyer scores an own goal that makes the score look much closer than, than it is. As I said, Arsenal Cricket Palace is still playing as, as, of, uh, as I'm recording this. So all I want to say is, if you want to see the result and all the implications of all these results on the league, Statscast will be coming uh, Tuesday sometime, um, hopefully <laughs> during the morning or lunchtime. So uh, you can all get it from there. In any case, drop a line what you think about all these things. You know, times are changing. Maybe some... T- uh, Newcastle has a new owner. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, Newcastle coach... Uh, has his 1,000th game and probably was his last one for Newcastle as well. So, you, you know, there's a change, immediate change there, uh, pro proper as well. Is there change needed at United or other uh, teams? All to be seen. And new coach at Watford with Ranieri back in the league. So, there you got it. Drop a line below, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, if you want to see more, talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.